Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about my favorite three lures for the month of September. Um, these lures will catch fish in the tough month, the transition month, and I want to share them with you. So stay tuned, it should be a good one. Okay. The very first lure that we're going to talk about today is absolutely deadly in the month of September, and that is a three inch swim bait. In particular, this is the three inch um, Kitek. It is in this color, is the Sil Sight Flash color. This lure here, hang yes, on, guys, I realize that the paddle tail is upside down on the jig, but for whatever reason, it, they just like it that way. Uh, this is a two watt Berkeley fusion swim jig head i like the white head but the gray works just as well um the way i like to run this is cast it out slow retrieve if i see a bait ball i'll bring it into that bait ball and then i'll just let it i'll kill it i'll just let it drop like it's dying um if i don't see a bait ball and i'm just trying to cover water i'll come in with a steady retrieve if i'm not getting hits on it like that I'll cast it out, I'll burn it, then I'll go to a slow retrieve, and I'll burn it, then I'll go to a slow retrieve, couple turns, burn it, slow retrieve, couple turns. That'll get it. That don't get it, I just straight up burn it. Um, between those couple retrieves, typically get me the fish, you know, get me the bites that I'm looking for. Um, this lure is deadly in all types of water, from clear water to slightly stained to even two inches of visibility I've caught fish in it in the month of September. It is a deadly little combination. I run that on a seven foot medium action spin spinning reel uh, combo um, with about six to eight pound fluorocarbon. The other color that I found works real well because not everybody has shad in their lakes. Some of us have perch and bluegill is this uh, bluegill um, Electric Shad, I'm sorry, Electric Shad, 3-inch Kitek. It's a Rip Kitek. And then what I'll do is I'll dip that boot tail in some chartreuse dye. Another deadly combination, guys. Hey, guys, if you like what you're seeing here, please subscribe to the channel. Smash that thumbs up button. And... Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. If there's something on the channel or, you know, in the video that catches your big one, please, if you want to, share a picture. I'd love to hear, love to see about, love to see pictures of you guys catching fish. Love to hear about your catches. Um, and if there's any other September lures that I haven't put in because I'm only doing three, um, please add them in the comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, we could all learn from each other. That's what it's about, right? Okay, so we're going to move on to the next floor, guys. And moving to the next floor, basically, fish are going to be suspended. They're going to be following the bait. They're in the fall transition. They're not going to be on their middle of summer um, places. You know, they're, they're transitioning into their fall transition, um, and they're following the bait. So a lot of your fish are going to be suspended. The thermocline in a lot of lakes are going to be rising, you know, thinning out, so the fish are going to come up higher. So we're going to talk about topwater. Well, we can't talk, talk topwater without a buzz bait. This is skirtless boot tail. Absolutely deadly. I'd burn this around laydowns, bridge pilings, uh, riprap bank, weed edges that are still alive. A lot of your weed lakes especially up north here in Pennsylvania, the weeds will start to die. But if you've got some fresh growth that's still very much alive, the fish are going to hold up in there, burn a buzz bait by it. Um, I also like to use the skirted version buzz baits.
This is by Stray King. This is the bleeding buzz bait. It is a very deadly buzz bait. Again, burn it around your lay downs, your dock pilings, your bridge pilings, um, brush piles that are up, you know, in shallow water. And I also like, you know, a smaller buzz bait with the white. Same difference, burning it past the structure along the weed end, weed edges that are still alive because weeds will create oxygen. Fish will use the weeds until they're all dead. Um, so most of the weeds are dying now. There are certain parts of the lake you're going to find fresh weed, still very much alive weed growth. Great place to target them fish, especially if you can find them in shallow water with a buzz bait. Um, if you can find them with a lay down close by or a deep drop off close by, could be another great place to get it. I would say more of the lay down because, like I said, the thermocline and the lakes are going to start to rise. And the fish won't go below it because there's no oxygen, no dissolved oxygen down below. So they're going to be above it. And they're going to be, that'll make them suspended in the water column. So, you know, they're going to move shallow. They're going to be suspended in deeper water. They're going to be around heart structure this time of the year. So those are some of the places you want to target them. Okay, guys. And then finally, last but not least, shallow water we were talking, we're and I wanted to give you three different depths. So like the swim baits, mid column to a little higher, you know, for your suspending fish. Buzz baits, obviously the surface of the water. And now in that shallow water where you got nice grass growth that'll be producing oxygen, football jig. Okay. I can't say enough, dirty water, black and blue. Clear water with blue gill or perch, peanut butter and jelly. And then dirty water to slightly stained, perch color. Guys, I would run a um, boot tail off of this or a kick and crawl style, something that has a little extra movement. Um, you know, if you're doing the boot tails, probably go to a four inch boot tail or something. Give it a little bit more profile. Or you could do the three inch, you know, and get a, a finesse style football that's got a short shaft like this. You could probably run the three inch on there and still get some action. Um, dragging it across the bottom, round dock pilings, around docks, shallow lay downs. Like I said, that fresh grass that hasn't died off yet, that's still producing auction, and they're going to be there. Rock piles up the shallow, you know, bouncing the football jig. Basically throw it out and drag it. Every once in a while, I'd snap it off the bottom and let it hit the bottom again just to get a reaction strike. Try to get them to come up and bite it, you know. Because these fish have been educated, guys. They've seen football jigs. They've seen swim baits. They've seen it all. we got to think outside the box. That's why I said burn. Don't give them time to think about it. You know, when you're stopping or you're slowing it down, it just causes a reaction strike. Um, you really don't want to give the fish time to think about it. With the football jig, you're dragging it along. And all of a sudden, you pop it off the bottom and he was following it. And he wasn't sure if he was going to eat it. And it snaps off the bottom and comes back out. He's going to react. He's going to bite it. Um, you know, I hate to say it this time of the year, we're looking more at reaction bites. Or when we find them bait fish sculling. You know, they got them corralled. And they're blowing up on them. Uh, this could happen around uh, main lake points. Weed edges that are still got, you know, still got live growth in it where it kind of coves in. They'll sometimes push them in there. Um, they could happen out in the middle of, the, you know, just random spot in the lake. Um, they can corral them up in the shallow coves. Um, but anywhere they would corral them, you know, that's, you know, they'll start exploding. These baits would be... If they're corralling the fish on the surface, I don't think I'd use the football jig. I'd either use the swim bait or the buzz bait. Um, 
to trigger those reaction strikes. Um, like I said, throwing a little bit of chartreuse in, bringing it through the school, and then letting it die. Now you're the one shad, the one perch, the one bluegill that looks slightly different than all the others, and he's dying. He's going to get eaten. You want to be, when you're fishing the bait balls, you don't want to be the same exact looking fish as the hundred fish that are in that bait ball. You want a slight subtlety. Um, if you're using something like this, maybe chartreuse marker down the side or a little dye on the tail. Just something slightly different to separate you from the hundreds of other fish that they're eating. And then I like killing it because I'm going to tell you some of your biggest fish, they're lazy. They let the little young fish come up and crowd them fish and they're eating up top. And you kill your bait and it gets down below. Well, that big fish is sitting down there waiting for the injured fish and the dying fish to come down and he just takes it in. Um, it's a great way to catch some big ones. Uh, but those are my three top September lures. If you liked the video, please smash the hell out of that uh, subs uh, thumbs up button. If uh, you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate that. And like always, guys, leave a comment down below if there's anything you would add to the September lures or, you know, if you got something or if, even if you have any questions. So we all, I love to hear from you. Um, just leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Uh, and if you got any good fish on the lures that I shared today, hey, leave a picture down below. Love to see it. Okay, guys, till next time. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks.